Greetings, everybody. Turn to Genesis chapter 31. We're going to cover the Dreams series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Like I've mentioned before, all these studies I'm doing in Genesis, I'm going to post them. I'm going to make two copies, one for the Genesis uh, playlist and one for the Dreams and Visions playlist. So, you know, if you see uh, two uploads, it's the same thing. So I might have to change the name. Like I say, uh, Tube does not like me to put one video on two playlists. It makes a problem. So, um, you know, it helps also when you have studied the backstory. Now, the thing is, Jacob had been sent of his father, Isaac, to see Laban to get a wife. Uh, Laban said, well, you know, you work for me and you can have my daughter that I, that you love. And uh, Jacob loved Rachel. But Leah was the older. So he gave Leah to him first. I guess it was, you know, nighttime in the bedroom and there was no light. And uh, you probably... Uh, Laban probably told her, well, don't say anything. And uh, so when the morning light comes and hits, uh, Jacob finds out that, hey, wait a minute, this isn't the girl that I was working for here. So I have a feeling that Rachel was probably the very pretty girly girl, and Leah was says that Leah was tender-eyed. I don't know what that means. You know, maybe she was cross-eyed. I, I don't know. Maybe she was the librarian type, you know, just kind of plain. I don't know. So let's, uh, so he worked for Laban for 14 years, seven years for the one and seven years for the other, if I memory serves me correctly. Um, and then... Jacob was tending his fields. And uh, basically, Laban had made a deal with him saying, well, you know, the cattle that are uh, marked in a certain way, those will be yours and the rest will be mine. So what did the Lord do? All the cattle that were born were the way that was to be Jacob's wages. I mean, the Lord had, had uh, basically put it upon Laban's own head. You know, Laban thought he was going to cheat Jacob, but it ended up biting him in the rear end, I guess you could say. So, with that in mind, uh, let's read Genesis 31. Now, you know, you could, Genesis is a very, very important book in the Bible. It's the foundation. You know, if you don't have a solid foundation, things just, uh, you know, you, you can't skip the introduction and the first few chapters of a, a novel and then get to the end and think you're going to understand what happened. I mean, you might have some understanding, but, you know, Genesis is very important. And Jacob had 12 sons and a daughter, and the 12 sons became the 12 tribes of Israel. So, all right, so let's read Genesis 31.1. And he, Jacob, and he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. See, Laban was happy to have Jacob before, but 
Not anymore. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. See, Jacob had served uh, for Rachel because he loved Rachel. But Leah... It doesn't look like he loved Leah. So, I don't know. I feel bad for Leah. I really do. If he said thus, for example, if uh, Laban said, If he say thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle ha bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring strake shall be thy hire, then all then bear all the cattle ring-straked. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass, at the time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring-straked, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straked and uh, speckled and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he hath sold us, and hath quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father, that is ours, and our children's, now then, whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in Padanaram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Ah, Rachel, the beloved of his beloved, Jacob's beloved, had stolen the idols. That were her father's. So basically, she's an idol worshiper, I suppose. Uh, at least that's what I get out of it. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian in that he told him not that he had fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob had fled. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. Now listen to this. So not only did God go to Jacob in a dream, but now... God's going to come to Laban in a dream. 
Oh yeah, verse 24. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, neither either good or bad. In other words, don't you be don't you be talking bad about my boy now. That's the Bob translation. Verse 25, Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done, that thou hast stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword? Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly, and steal away from me, and didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with mirth, and with songs, with tabret, and with harp? You know, I was going to send you away with music. Verse 28. And hast thou suffered, and, and hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in my power, it is in, it is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spake unto me yesternight, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. And now through uh, though thou wouldest needs be gone, because thou sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? Oh boy, you stole my gods. Uh, those gods were so weak, they couldn't even prevent themselves from being stolen, huh? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure, thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me, with whomsoever thou findest thy gods, your gods, right? Let him not live. Let him not live. Why him? Did, uh, Jacob think that perhaps one of his sons had stolen the gods? Why didn't he say, let not them live? Maybe thinking, you know, maybe Rachel or Leah took, or, you know, I don't know. With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. Before our brethren discern thou what is thine? What is thine with me? And take it to thee, for Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. Now Rachel is the beloved of eyes of uh, of Jacob. He's she's the one that he loves, not Leah. You want to know something, Leah? The one that he didn't love bore seven of Jacob's children. Uh, well, one of them was the daughter, Dinah, and she bore him six sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, the tribe of the Levites, the Levitical priesthood one of the most important of the tribes. Judah, the king tribe. You know, King David and Christ. Uh, also, Issachar and Zebulun were of Leah. All the important children, well, I wouldn't say all, but of the most important children, it would seem, the king tribe and the priest tribe came from Leah. So, for Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. So, the one that he loves is the one that stole the, the idols, the gods, the fake gods. Verse 33. 
And Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the two maid servants' tents, but he found them not. Then went he out of Leah's tent and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture and sat upon them. Rachel, you're sitting on Laban's gods. What's wrong with you, girl? And sat upon them. And Rachel uh, and Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. Now, if you don't know what the custom of women is, uh, the worldly translation would be, it's, it's her time of the month. Yeah. Girls get it. Uh, hopefully the guys do too, but, you know. All right, verse 36. And Jacob was wroth. He was mad and chode with Laban. And, Jabed, J and Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Uh, you know, I, I imagine what's going through Jacob's mind. Did he make all this stuff up, you know, thinking maybe Laban just made all this up to falsely accuse him, to, you know, be able to follow after him? You know? Did Laban, uh, was, you know, Jacob is probably thinking, did, is Jabin, Laban bearing false witness? I don't know. What is my trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. In other words, take all the stuff and put it here so we can, you know, they can judge between us. This twenty years have I been with thee. Thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. Of my hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was, in the day, the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times." except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me. Surely thou hadst sent me away now empty. God hath seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked thee yesternight. Wow. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine, and what can I do this day unto thee, unto these my daughters, and unto their children which they have borne? Now therefore, come thou, let us make a covenant. Let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone, and set it up for a pillar. Is this the same stone? I think so. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones, and they took stones, and made an heap, and they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it Jegar Shada Dutha, but Jacob called it Galid. Uh, I'm probably mispronouncing that terribly. Jegar Shadutha, uh, whatever, uh, means uh, basically to gather as in a, a witness heap. Okay, that's what 
that the word that word means. Now the um, Galid um, also means uh, witness heap. So I don't know the difference between these two words. I kind of wondered if there was some kind of a difference between the two words, but I don't know. And a root word, uh, one of the root words it comes from is a witness. So basically they're saying, let this heap of stones be a witness between, uh, between us. Verse 48. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galid. And Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent from, uh, absent one from another. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives besides my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar, which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be witness, and this pil pillar be witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. The God of Abraham... And the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge betwixt us. And Jacob swear by the fear of his father, Isaac. And J then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning, Laban rose up and kissed his sons and his daughters and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned unto his place. Boy, I tell you what, you get a dream from the Lord, uh, better listen, right? All right, uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.